some of the last views of our pelicans before they all go north to Canada for the summer. Hi friends. Today's video is going to be different. The reason being that I made this video five years ago. And five years ago, I couldn't post it because when you first start a YouTube channel, you can only post videos of 10 or 15 minutes in length. And um, once I was enabled to post it, I reviewed it and decided that it was too boring, that I repeat myself too much, that I get sidetracked, and in a way that it was a little too personal. Well, after five years, um, I've decided to post it. So what's it about? At the time, I had just finished building this house, and I was kind of toying with the idea myself of downsizing again, going back and living in the motorhome for a while, and uh, that would have been that old south wind that we had at that time. So I was watching a lot of YouTube videos about minimalizing your life, uh, the concept of a minimalistic lifestyle, and that's what was on my mind at that time. So, if you find yourself at a crossroads in life, and I think that applies to people who want to retire in Mexico, that you're going to try to get rid of some of your stuff, you're going to downsize your life, or if you're uh, one of my RV fans, uh, you face this. Or if you're thinking about being in an RV, you're facing it. Getting rid of your stuff, um, figuring out how to uh, pay for a lifestyle that might be smaller than the one that you've been enjoying. So that's what the video was about. Why did I decide to post it today? Well, because I think a lot of you probably are at one of those crossroads. Anyway, if you're happy with your life, <laughs> you should probably just shut this video off right now and go and enjoy your day. But if you do stick with it, you may find some small gem of life lesson in here in spite of my repeating and getting off track. I've also looked back at some of the most successful videos of, uh, uh, that I've had, one of them having over 700,000 views, and I've, I think I have seen that what makes them popular is that I share some of my personal journey in life. So in a way, this is 50 years of my journey to get to a place where I enjoy a lot more freedom than a lot of people and how I got there. Thanks for watching. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. And I'm going to sit right over there and talk about what's on my mind today. And here's what's on my mind today. I've been watching YouTube videos last night and um, I'm a big fan of Happily Houseless. This is a guy in Arizona who's trying to sell his 3,000 square foot house and move into a van and uh, he's going through that process. And he posted a video uh, a couple of nights ago, New Year's Eve, about a minimalist challenge. And uh, minimalism is a concept that, uh, that I really believe in. And here's what's on my mind. I've made a video a few days ago and I'm showing off my house and my van and my ATV and talking about a motorhome and my motorcycle and um, I'm surrounded by all of these material possessions and so when I say that I think that minimalism is a great concept, um, that may not seem like it rings true. But I do believe that minimalism is a great plan. And I'm going to make a statement, and then I'm going to back up about 50 years and tell you how I got there. Minimalism, or downsizing, or you know, how, whatever you want to call it, 
is a great concept in order to move towards a more free lifestyle. And uh, it, but it's a process. It's a process that has an end result. A process that creates a product. And freedom is not the product. The product is more spendable income. You get rid of the house payment so that you can use that money to do something else that you prefer to do. You have the freedom to use that money. Instead of paying rent in an apartment, you live in a van. Now, that's a great concept. It's a good, good, great plan. As long as you remember that it's not the lack of material possessions that gives you freedom. It's the extra spendable income. That's what you should focus on. I'm not here to tell anybody how to live their life or how to not live their life. But uh, at my age, I can listen to some people say, and again, this was happily houseless. And he's got this uh, uh, analogy of uh, the Niagara River and how most people are floating along in the current and everything's just going fine and everything's hunky-dory and all of a sudden you get there and you start here in the falls and you're going to fall over it and it's too late to do anything about changing your life and becoming more free or more happy or more peaceful or more spiritual or whatever your goal is. Financial freedom is the means of achieving the freedom that people talk about. So, here's a statement. The statement is that I absolutely think that minimalism or downsizing is a great plan as long as you focus on that process creating more spendable income because and here's another guy that I've, I'm a big fan of his and, and I'm not critical okay I, I don't want to be critical and I don't want to sound like I'm dissing him because I love the guy uh, Mike of living free and he's, he's living in slab city right now in his van here's a guy who, and I may be wrong, he may have some things going on that I have no concept of. And again, I don't know the guy personally, but I watch all of his videos and I'm a big fan. He's living out there in a very, very minimalist fashion. But it reminds me of the song by Chris Christopherson, me and Bobby McGee. Um, freedom is just another word for nothing left to lose. That can't be the goal. If that's the goal, you're going to hit Niagara Falls big time at some point in your life. So, focus on spendable income. That's what gives you freedom. Let me give you a, an example in reverse. We all have, you know, favorite movie stars that we admire. And in some cases, we envy them because they have the freedom to move about the world. Um, let's take Brad Pitt, for example. Brad Pitt, uh, in my guess, has enough money to do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, wherever he wants, and that's freedom. Uh, when the Katrina... Uh, the hurricane devastated New Orleans. Brad Pitt went down there and started building houses. I mean, you know, hammers and saws and physical labor. And, you know, of course, he put some money into that, I, I, I think, and, and he helped out financially. But the fact is, he had the freedom to do that, to do something he wanted. And it wasn't the lack of material possessions that enabled him to have that freedom. I'm sure he has a lot of material possessions. It was spendable income. Income that he could spend without worrying about having some more later for something else. 
and that something else is paying your mortgage, then get rid of the mortgage and have that income to do something else with. Or if it's for paying rent, get rid of that, live in a van, have that money to do something else with. That's freedom. Now, none of us, well, I shouldn't say none of us, I don't know who's watching, but I don't have that kind of freedom. I don't have the freedom to hop on a first-class air ticket and go to Paris for the weekend. Actually, I do, but I couldn't do it a lot of times. And the point is that it's not the lack of material possessions that gives you freedom. It's the lack of a financial commitment to maintain those material possessions, to make the payment on the car, or to make the mortgage payment. It's that commitment of having a place to store all of those things, because it costs money to do that. But if you have plenty of money to do that, you have enough income to have some left over to buy your freedom, that's the point. It's not getting rid of the stuff. It's having the income. So how did I get there? Well, when I was a teenager, uh, I lived with uh, a dad who had gone through the Great uh, Depression. And I'm sure there are some of you watching this that may have never even heard of the Great Depression. But in, after the stock market crashed in 1929, and I'm talking about before I was born. I hope I didn't have to say that. Uh, things were tough in America. I mean, people starved. And uh, it's, it was the Great Depression. And my father went through that and had to live in a very minimalist fashion, not by choice, but by desperation. And um, Growing up with a father like that, you know, it's like, get a good job, save your money, retire. That was the plan. Well, as a teenager, you know, you, you always think you're going to grow up and be a millionaire. And uh, things are always going to be great, and you're never going to die. So that's where I started. And then uh, I went out on my own, and things got a little tougher, and you start to lose some of that idealism. Um, let me skip ahead a few years. I'm living in a 1968 Volkswagen camper. Not one of the Westphalias where the whole roof goes up and you can stand up. I'm talking about it had a pop top, but it was three by three. You could stand up and put on your jeans, but there wasn't room to stand up and make breakfast. And I'm living in that with my first wife and four little dogs. Fortunately, little dogs. And we lived in that for months, and we traveled. Uh, we started out in central uh, California, and went through the southwest, and went to the Ozarks in Missouri, then back to uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We went to Denver. We followed the Rocky Mountains up to Banff and Jasper, over to the Pacific Coast, and back down uh, to Central California, where, incidentally, we uh, split up, got divorced, and never saw her again. That's another video, too. The point is that we lived minimally. We never heard the word minimal, a minimalist. We never understood the concept of minimalism. But she was a botanist, and uh, she used to go out in the pasture and pick weeds and feed them to me. Well, I guarantee you, if you're eating weeds for dinner, you understand minimalism. Living in a Volkswagen camper without any income. I mean, we were scraping. Occasionally, I got a little money from a relative or something to buy gas to get to the next place. And the point is... Not that you should, you know, revel in my experience or uh, feel bad for me, certainly, but uh, that I understand living minimal. 
So I skip ahead a few years, now I'm in the second wife. And that happens to be the wife I still have after 40 some years. And she's wonderful. But we had some tough times. Uh, there were times when we were living in a car. And this was living minimally or living in a minimalist uh, 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 um, lifestyle. Not by choice, but by desperation. And uh, there were times when we used to have to make a decision about whether we were going to smoke that day or buy a hamburger. And also, speaking of hamburger, we used to carry a little vial of uh, black flies. And we'd go to a hamburger joint and we'd order a hamburger and we'd eat like two thirds of it and then we'd put a fly in it in the mayonnaise. And we'd take it back up to the counter and say, hey, wow, look at this, give me another bird. Um, that's a little bit beyond what people think of as a minimalist <laughs> lifestyle. <laughs> but, uh, again, the point is, I understand living minimally. So let me talk uh, about a few years later, quite a few, uh, quite a few years later, and uh, I started a business, and I was doing pretty good, and I had a big house, lived in a 7,000 square foot mini mansion, and uh, three city lots, huge yard, bought it because I had little kids, and um, you know, they could walk to school from that house, and uh, I owned all the property, clear down to the school. I could lay in bed upstairs and watch my kids go down the sidewalk to school and I'm first, second, third, fourth grade. And that was wonderful. And I was making money, a lot of money, for the time. And it uh, came to pass that uh, the business went uh, south. So all of a sudden, again, um, not by choice, but by circumstance, I'm moving towards downsizing. And we sold the big house and moved into a smaller house. And smaller for us was about 2,500 square feet. But I remember two things. Cilantro. I just had some onions here. I remember two things about coming out of the big white house. The big white house is beautiful, by the way, isn't it? Greek Revival Architecture and National Historical Register in a very nice part of Portland, Oregon. Anyway, um, the two things I remember that really got to me and were like epiphanies in the exit from that lifestyle. One of them was that when we got the garage sailing things and getting rid of things and giving away things and and uh, selling things. I remember the moment I realized I had nine couches. Who in the hell needs <laughs> nine couches? But it's like that river, uh, the Niagara River that Happily Houses was talking about. You, you're floating along and you accumulate these things. When we moved into that house, we didn't have enough furniture to fill up, so what we used to do was we'd go to auctions, and we'd come home a couple times a week with a pickup load of stuff to start filling up the house. And we used to joke about we're furnishing it with period furniture. The period, uh, it wasn't, you know, Victorian or French provincial, early American. It, the, the period was 1970s garage sale. So the, not all of those nine couches were brand new or expensive but had nine couches. The other thing I remember about that is that when we got towards the end of it, when we were ready to actually move and had the last, maybe the last garage sale uh, to get rid of stuff, to downsize, I had a pickup load of stuff and I took it down to the Goodwill. It wasn't, I, it wasn't a Goodwill, it was a Salvation Army on 82nd Street in Portland, Oregon. And I backed up to the 
loading dock in the warehouse behind the store. And a guy came out and he went through this pickup load of stuff. Now, realize this is stuff that I'd had for years and obviously I valued it or I, uh, or I wouldn't uh, have kept it, you'd think. And so I'm feeling good about, you know, donating to the Salvation Army. And the guy goes through the pickup load and he wants about half of it and he won't take the other half. And I, I asked him if I could just throw it in this dumpster because, you know, I was in this downsizing mode. Nope, can't throw it in the dumpster, just don't want it. So I'm driving back home with a half a pickup load of my stuff that I had previously valued and it, I had another epiphany. Well, so this morning uh, in the middle of uh, talking about minimalism, my iPad battery ran down. And then life got in the way, so I had other things to do. But I wanted to finish the thought. It's now late afternoon, so I'm in the house. And got a little chilly, so I put on my sweatshirt. Uh, it stopped right when I said I had that second epiphany after uh, coming back from Value Village uh, with a half a pickup load of my stuff. And the epiphany was that if the junk store didn't want that stuff, then why in the world should I value it? Why in the world had I valued it in the past? And I don't want to get too philosophical about it, but um, it just brought to my awareness, rose to the surface of my uh, self-awareness, that my material possessions were not as important as I had thought when I'm starting a business and making money and moving into the big house and buying a boat and, you know, the cars and... Having Value Village, a junk store, tell me that they didn't want my stuff, told me that I was mistaken about how important that stuff was. That was the epiphany. Uh, now we're going to move ahead a few more years. And I've uh, become successful again. And I've um, been able to buy my freedom. I've been able to have enough extra money that I didn't have to work too hard. But I did work hard, and I worked hard at other businesses in developing multiple streams of income. And this, about, this video is not about that. I'm not going to tell you how to make a living. I'm not going to tell you how to make multiple streams of income. I'm not going to tell you how to be successful. That's not my job. That's your job. You have to figure out what works for you. But what's not going to work for you is getting rid of your stuff and getting rid of your house and not living in an apartment, living in your van and forgetting about the real purpose of that, which is to give you more money to spend in the way that you want. And maybe the way that you want is to buy yourself out of a job. I'm not saying you have to be really successful or that you have to make a lot of money. If you can live on a few hundred dollars a month and be happy doing what, you, what you're doing, then that's great. That's a good plan. That's a great plan. That's a much better plan than working your ass off and making, you know, $200,000 a year and spending every penny of it and going deeper in debt because you're into that lifestyle. Living on a minimalist income is just fine if it makes you happy. But don't forget, getting rid of the stuff is not the point. The point is spendable cash. So now I'm going to move ahead to another point in my life where instead of living in a Volkswagen van out of desperation or losing the business, I actually got to the point in my life where I could exercise my 
faith in downsizing and minimalizing as a decision instead of being forced into it. It came to pass that the business I had worked at for 27 years uh, came to an end. And um, that was good, that was bad. It was bad because it was emotional, because it wasn't my choice. I lost contracts that I'd had for a long time. <clears throat> In the end, though, it forced me to evaluate what I wanted to do, and fortunately, um, I had accumulated enough other income streams and enough uh, assets that I didn't really have to work for a living anymore. And again, that's not talking about how much money I was making or uh, that I had enough to support a particular lifestyle. Uh, the concept is that you are happy living with what you have. And if that's a few hundred dollars a month living in a van and traveling around and doing what you want, that's great. That's what we're talking about. That's good. The fact that I had a little higher uh, um, level of comfort and lifestyle, that's, diff that's, that's not the point. The point is that it's income and extra spending money that makes freedom, not getting rid of stuff. So that time I'm living in a smaller house again, uh, but I fixed it up and uh, I was about to make some money on uh, rehabbing it and selling it. And we did that for a year after I got out of the 27 year business. And we made a little money on that. And what I did with the money was I went and bought a motorhome and uh, we lived in the motorhome for three years. So again, I was in that position where I'm moving out of a four bedroom house and I've got tools I've had since I was a kid and I've got stuff and um, I'm getting rid of it. I'm selling it off. And I got into this mental state and this is what I was really thinking about this morning when I was talking about happily houseless making that minimalist challenge. The challenge is to get rid of one thing today and two things tomorrow until you got all this ball rolling about getting rid of your stuff. Well, I went through that by choice this time. I got rid of my stuff. I got rid of things I'd had all my life. I got rid of family heirlooms. I got rid of furniture I got from my grandmother. I just started cleaning house on my life and moved into that motorhome with the wife and two cats. And I got to tell you, those three years were the happiest three years of my life so far. And then uh, we came to Mexico and bought a little house. And the house you see now I've built. But, uh, and that's been my fun and my project. And I've had the freedom, the financial freedom, to build this house. But living in the motorhome and being free, that was wonderful. So I'm going to wrap this up, but the point is, back to that statement I made in the, in the beginning this morning, minimalism, downsizing, whatever you want to call it, it's a great plan. As long as you remember that it's a process, and the process is creating more spendable income. Otherwise, you're just heading towards being Bobby McGee. Where freedom is just another word for nothing left to lose. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.